We'll just say your first and last name into the microphone for me one time, please. Bo Corrales. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. What up? Uh, well, I guess I'll start. <laughs> Nobody else wants to ask the question. The basic question basically something. coming off of, out of the weekend is how are you guys, you know, containing those emotions off of such a huge victory for you, rivalry game and all that, and going into the month of November with so much ahead of you guys. How are you guys containing that emotion going into this week of Virginia? Uh, I'd say just being aware. Um, we're really aware of the situation that we're in, the opportunity that we have, and so uh, that's given us a lot of focus, and so that's what we're keeping going into this game moving forward. What ways have you improved from, uh, say, September in your first training camp to, to now? Um, I mean, I feel like in all aspects of my game, it's improved a bunch. I've put a lot of work between then and now. Um, I'd also say just uh, I say all around just because uh, kind of in that in that time frame I was kind of coming off of uh, a little bit of a leg injury so like I just wasn't at my 100% yet or that was really right whenever I was feeling uh, back to 100% so just all that time to from I've been feeling great from then until now so just all that time that I've been able to work work out feeling healthy and feeling good um, I mean it helps. Kind of an easy question but uh, how much more fun is this right now than the last couple of years and in addition, how do you kind of balance the fun and the work? Uh, I'd say just again with being aware, first of, first of all, but then uh, at the same time, I mean, uh, it's fun just like being in, in the situation where like you've been looking forward to your whole life, you know, like these are the kind of games you want to be playing in, these are the kind of environments you want to be playing in, so I mean, it's fun just being, being able to be aware that you're in it and then at the same time being aware of the opportunities that we have at stake and uh, just making sure that we bust our butts to uh, get the job done. Coach Longer has talked a lot about playing instinctively. Is there a period of time with his offense that kind of it takes to just play instead of thinking what you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think that was one of the best things that we were able to do uh, as an offense because, I mean, Longo keeps it really simple. So for us, learning it in the spring and then all the way through, to where, we at now, to where we're at now, I mean, uh, several games in. Especially, I'd say games help a lot, too. Um, we were kind of curious as to who we were as an offense, and being able to play an actual opponent and not just your team uh, really tells you who you are, and so we're able to find who we were and play instinct instinctively through that. When Sam scrambles and maybe you've all been covered for you know, what was supposed to be the play, do you just go look for space, or do you go deep, or what's kind of the move? Do you come back? I mean, is there just... Uh, well, I mean, that's a funny question because we work on that drill pretty often, or uh, just a scramble drill, like where if uh, we'll let Sam hold the ball on purpose for like a little too long and then just have him roll out, and depending on where we're rolling out, like we all have certain areas, certain spaces that uh, we know we need to get to and uh, get to the best position for him so that he has an opportunity to hit us. Does each play or error route have a like a last chance option that you go to, or is it kind of like instinctual, like you kind yeah, of more feel? Of yeah, kind of more just instincts. Like depending on where you're at on the field, like you know where like the best spot is. Depending on which way Sam's rolling out, like you can kind of just feel those. And I mean, like, like I said, all of Longo's uh, main theme on on the offense is playing instinctively. So he he drills us on those so that we know just instinctively. Okay, like if Sam's rolling out towards me and I just finished running a curl, I know I gotta I got some space behind me I can work to and stuff like that. When he described the offense back in the spring and then in August, he Use the term finding grass a few times. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah. Just finding the grass? Yeah, exactly like that. Yes, I've had no noon starts this year. Do you have a preferred time to play? Do you like the night games? Or do you want, you know, you're sorry to play, do you want to play early? No, I haven't mind the, the start times at all. I mean, uh, noon, I mean, I'm not going to say it's terrible, but like it, it comes on a little too quick, honestly. Like, I, I, I like being able, being able to get prepared for a game throughout a game day. And I feel like the, the four o'clock games have been feeling like perfect timing, honestly, especially for. Being type one, like being able to have a consistent clock, being able to have some time in my day to kind of situate my blood sugar, it really helps. So uh, the evening games, uh, I've definitely liked a lot more. How cool has it been to play in these atmospheres? Uh, it's been louder than it's been in two or three years. Yeah, I mean, it, it's ridiculous. Uh, the fans have been crazy, uh, no matter where we've been, and so uh, I, I think it just. It's, it's humbling, really, honestly, like thinking back on it just because, like I said earlier, I mean, these are the kind of moments that you live for. These are the kind of games that you've dreamed of and stuff. And so it's, it's an honor and a blessing to be able to be here. 
does it feel kind of different going to class and, and feeling a little bit more of a buzz about football this time of year? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, they were talking about uh, a couple practices ago, we were talking about how winning is a cure-all for anything. You're feeling bad and like you're sore, you're beat up, you're tired, whatever it is. I mean, if you win, you, you feel like you're, you're ready to go play another game, you know? So it's a... Uh, just being able to be in this kind of this atmosphere, not just in Keenan, but like on in Chapel Hill, like it feels good to make sure that football's back on the rise. Bo, Coach Longo talked uh, yesterday about the relationship that you have with his daughter who has type one diabetes too. I mean, what is what is your relationship like relationship like with her in the first place? And then is that maybe brought you and Coach Longo closer because you have such a u unique relationship? With his um, I'd say a little bit because I mean, me and whenever Coach Longo first got here, we definitely had sat down and had a talk. Um, I told him about like my issues, he told me about issues he has with his daughter and stuff and we kind of just took a little bit of time to talk diabetic talk, I guess. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know, I definitely say my, my relationship with Gianna is pretty uh, interesting. She's, a, she's really mature for her age, which I'm not surprised because diabetes will definitely put some responsibility on, uh, on yourself. Even though she's really, really young, I, I forgot what her age is, but she, I mean, she's a little girl. I think you said eight. eight yeah. 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 She acts like a total grown up. It's <laughs> hilarious. But I mean, like, she has like a little game, like, especially during the summer, like during fall camp and stuff. She was running around with the, one of the trainer's bottles and was like finding me wherever I was if I wasn't practicing and was squirting me with water and stuff. And so I try to get her back. I know. Uh, currently have the game on timeout while it's a little chilly, but she told me, uh, she made sure to remind me that she's going to get me back in the spring. So. Definitely interesting with her. This upcoming game has been dubbed by some as the biggest game of the year. Do you feel any of that pressure going into this game, or are you just staying level-headed? Uh, I'd say pretty level-headed, I guess, just because, I mean, uh, as I mentioned earlier, like we definitely know like the, the opportunities that we're being given right now. Um, but at the same time, like I forgot uh, who the basketball player was that had mentioned it, but I mean, like, Playing a sport that you love isn't pressure. Like you should never feel pressure from that. Like pressure is like parents having to pay bills and meet, make uh, ends meet and stuff like that. So I'm just excited with the opportunity that we got. Well, uh, the NCAA today, you know, announced that they're going to allow uh, in the future. They're going to, you know, move in the direction of letting players uh, profit off their likeness and everything. As a student athlete, you know. What does that signal to you? What does that mean to you? Um, I mean, it's exciting to hear. Uh, I don't know how accurate their plan to put it into action is, but so I'm not too worried about it or anything like that. But I mean, it's definitely good good news to hear. Um, I feel like it, it's kind of just stuff moving in the right direction. So everybody's got to start somewhere. Everything's got to start somewhere. So I'm excited for it. If you're a guy that has a lot of, you know, say, a lot of followers on Instagram or social media, whatever. Um, and when you're coming into school and everything, you know, there's something that you can maybe uh, profit off of. So is that uh, something that kids uh, look forward to, you know, since you're in that social media age and everything? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I don't think my social media uh, fan page is up to that level of status, but, I mean, I'm sure guys out there are excited about it. I mean, I don't, I don't know why they wouldn't be, you know. Coming up, you know, when you realize you have a chance to be a D1 player, how much did guys look forward to the chance to be in the video game back, back then? Oh, I, shoot, I had a whole freaking roster of my Pop Warner team on the NCAA <laughs> game whenever, whenever I had it. Um, so, I mean, like, I think that just goes to speak to speak on how much, like, little kids look up to that, especially, I mean, I, I don't even remember how old I was whenever the last one came out, but it's been a while. And so, I mean, it, it it's definitely exciting and uh, brings back memories, so. Definitely some nostalgia with that. I'm sure a lot of other people feel that. What would be your catch What would you grade yourself? Ask me that again at the end of the season. I have a better, <laughs> better answer. Dude, were you a Texas guy from Vince Young? On oh, yeah. On, I mean, uh, Vince was on the bench whenever I was in because I was playing quarterback back then. <laughs> <laughs> you guys good? Cool. Thank Thanks, you, Bob. Thanks. No, no problem.